Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Sir Alex Ferguson Challenge with Sheffield United. In today's episode, what are we doing? We're facing Rosenborg and I have decided we are going to face Tottenham Hotspur in the second game in the Premier League due to how poor they have been and I just want to see how we actually perform against them. But let's go look at the fixtures. So we continued our good run of form after the Shea Norwich game, which we won 4-0 and won in the Carabao Cup third round against West Ham United 5-1. Wayne Null started the game and got himself two goals. Go on, Wayne. Ronaldo Sanchez with one, Dodo with one and an own goal to round things out. Ruben Loftus-Cheeks had made it 2-1 just before half-time, but we were dominant. Well, the very next game. I'll let you take a look at that just a second. Yep. They had one shot on target and we got beat 2-0. We were dominant in terms of match stats. We created a number of key opportunities which we didn't take. And as you can see, our first defeat in the Premier League is away from home against Brighton. Back-to-back -back defeats. This time, it was a little bit more understandable. We were at home against Barcelona and we ended up getting beat 1-0. Jose won Macias with the goal in the 29th minute for them. And despite a relatively even game, we couldn't get back into it and we didn't really create that key opportunity to get us back at 1-1. But then we bounced back against Bournemouth at home, back in the Premier League with a 3-1 win. Danny Olmo with one, Sebastiano Esposito with two, after John McGinn had equalised in the 26th minute. And finally at home against Leeds, we were rampant and we won 5-0. Josh Tymon started today's game as Pellegrini was a little bit uh, suffering in terms of match conditioning. He got himself a goal in six, inside six minutes. Esposito seems to have turned things around a little bit and he's got himself two goals today. Wayne Knowles again started as Haaland had come back from international duty a little bit tired. And he got himself a goal as did Dodo from right wing back. And this is how the Premier League table looks. We are still sitting top despite a couple of tricky results in there. And we are only one point clear though from Manchester City and Arsenal who are chasing alongside with Chelsea who are sitting in fourth. So by no means are we running away with this whatsoever. But sitting at top, the most goal difference, we are doing well and I am relatively pleased. The situation is a little bit different in the Champions League. As you can see in Group E here, we currently sit in third position. Obviously still got that reverse tie against Shakhtar and we play Rosenborg away today in the first game. So I'm hoping for a good, confident victory and hopefully get us back into the second place spot. So this is how we're going to start for today's game against Rosenborg. Pickford and Goal, Bella Kocha, Patella and Kera as our centre-backs. George Baldock's going to start a right wing-back as Dodo does have a little bit of a knock. And I don't want to really risk him against the side where we should be beating them regardless. Uh, Luca Pellegrini is our left wing-back. Mariba's going to start in the box-to-box -box midfielder role alongside Danny Olmo who's having just a fantastic season. He's a fantastic, fantastic player. Jean-Pierre comes back into the side after being dropped for a couple of games. I'm hoping that drop might see him reignite some of his form. As you can see in his last five games, he really hasn't performed. And neither has Haaland, actually. After a lightning start of the season, he has performed pretty poorly. So hoping he might step up to today alongside Esposito who has turned his form around massively. So we come up against Rosenberg, who play in a defensive 4-4-2. Um, I'm not going to even pretend like I recognise any of these players. I think I recognise Hovland. I don't know why. Um, has he been about in the English leagues at all? He hasn't. So I might I might just be a football manager thing I've seen him from before. But we'll see how we get on today. We should get a confident, comfortable win. But that's not always how things go, as we saw in the Brighton game. So let's see how it goes. Very first highlight of the game coming only 30 seconds in. It is actually Rosenborg. Oh, well, that, that was that was a great highlight. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Opening 20 minutes of the store have been a bit stale, but we get our proper first highlight. Danny Olmo whips the ball in Batella. Oh my God, what a goal that is by a centre-back. We'll watch that again in the replay. But the ball comes in from Danny Olmo and Batella brings it down beautifully and remains composed. As he finds the back of the net, here it is. He brings it down. He's got two two men on and one man challenging the whole way. But he finds the shot somehow and he beats the goalkeeper getting his first goal of the season. And we are 1-0 up. 30 minutes in now and we have another high, highlight. Can I speak? Haaland down the right-hand side after a clearance from a Rosenborg attack. He finds Esposito in the box. It's a tight angle. He's got to go back to George Bollock. Whip the ball in back post. We've got options there. It's found its way to Esposito. And he continues his good run of form. His seventh goal of the season. Bollock proving he can still do it. Even when Dodo can't step up due to injury. Not because of bad form. Um, but some good player from Osea keeping the ball in the right area. Not going for goal as would tend to happen on the old 
um, database, not database, whatever it is. We're on the public beta, so we've got the new match engine. Um, usually they would have just went for a goal there, even from the byline. So happy days, 2-0. Another highlight now, Rosenborg in possession, keeping it well in the midfield, but they give the ball away sloppily to Jean-Pierre, who then returns the favour, and they can play it down the left-hand side with Asin. George Baldock jockeys him all the way. It's cleared by Patella. Only straight back out to him on this left-hand side. The ball's whipped in. Whew, that went. That was a little bit too close for comfort. One minute to go of the first half, and we have our final highlight. One more presume as Baldock whips the ball in. Falls to Pellegrini, and what a strike that is. Our defenders really do enjoy a good goal particularly our wing backs and Pellegrini gets his fourth goal of the season George Baldock with another assist from right wing back and we can't complain with this we'll see it go all the way over every head nobody challenges for it and Pellegrini first time buries it at the back corner and there we have it half time Rosenborg nil Sheffield United nil air three just a pretty routine game so far obviously we are expected to beat the likes of Rosenborg uh, we're getting some good performances from some players, though. I would like to see Harlan and Jean Pierre maybe do something, but I'm half tempted. I'm actually going to do it. I'm going to take them both off. We'll get Wayne Knowles on, and we will also get Lucas Nunes on. Our two young boys who are really looking to give more game time. Might as well bring them on in a game like this where it's already pretty much done. Another highlight now George Baldock whips the ball in again. Esposito goes close. 19 minutes remain, George Bollock, he's struggling a bit out there in terms of his conditioning, but he's going to stay out there for now. Wayne Knowles finds Mariba in the box, and what a finish that is for his first goal of the season. Wayne Knowles coming on, getting himself an assist in the Champions League as well is absolutely fantastic. As we can see here, it all starts with Bollock on this right-hand side, finds Wayne Knowles in the pocket of space just ahead of him. Absolute gaping spaces on the edge of the box for the likes of Mariba, bombing forward, and he, first goal of the season is a little bit surprising, but... I'm happy he's, he's off the mark. With only a few minutes remaining, we're going to get George Baldock off. I don't want to bring on um, Dodo, so we will bring on Marcus Antonio, our central midfielder, in, in that right wing back role, just to save Baldock's poor, tired legs. He's getting on a bit, bless him. Uh, so when he does come in for Dodo, we do have to take care of him. That's a fantastic result. 4-0 away from home in the Champions League, even against an opposition like Rosenborg, is nothing to sneeze at. We will load through this and see how our group now stands after those set of fixtures. So Shakhtar got beat off Barcelona as expected and we do rise to second position, which makes it interesting. Next game, uh, well our next game will be against Barcelona that you will see live, but we do have Shakhtar. Shall I do Shakhtar Barca? I think that's what I'm going to do. Change my mind already. So we will face Shakhtar in the next episode. Um, and we'll see. Because obviously they're the ones we are competing with for that second player spot. And we have them at home. So you would expect a better performance than the away leg. Anyway, moving on. We do have Spurs next to I didn't actually show you. Currently sitting in 16th position. They've managed to get themselves out of the relegation zone. Which they were in when I decided I was going to play them. They were sitting in um, 19th position. But they must have won the previous game. They've still got some really, really good players. The likes of La Celso and stuff is still there. But Oli Gunnar Solskjaer is currently managing them. So, yeah, it says it all. Let's see here at Spurs. We're at the Spurs game and there's only, is there only a couple of changes to the starting 11. Dodo, of course, returns after recovering from his injury at right wing back. And we also have um, Danny Olmo going into the attack and midfield role. And Renato Sanchez coming in for Jean-Pierre who was playing in behind the strikers. Haaland retains his position even though he's not playing well, just because we know of his quality and how quickly he could turn it on. And here is the Tottenham Hotspur squad that is currently floating around the relegation zone. I can't hardly believe it. I don't know who this is. He's absolutely terrible. Stop playing him at right back. But they've got the likes of Emilio Dero, who's a decent uh, goalkeeper from Italy. They've also signed the likes of Daniel Rugani, Mugalele, they've got Luke Shaw, uh, Marcus Rashford playing out on the left, who's always a good player on Football Manager. Genie Wijnaldum, Allen, uh, Melina, who I don't know, he is he's going to be absolutely fantastic. Uh, Lo Celso in behind Aguri, who is the um, is Leon, isn't he? He is Leon. They've signed him for fifty seven million in the summer. Isn't exactly having in the greatest time, but their first eleven is more than comparable with ours. So this is going to be no easy game whatsoever. And actually, looking at the team now, I think I will be quite happy with a point. And there's a highlight straight from kickoff, which is never a good sign unless it's for us. Dodo going down this right-hand side. He's, he's attacking his man, which is nice to see. Danny Olmo in the box, plates it in. 
clear by the Spurs defence. Rashford can bring it out. And now Guri can drive out our defence in return. Molina gets dispossessed by Pellegrini. This highlight is still continuing. I uh, don't like it. Rashford. Oh, he dinks the ball in. Molina at the back post. Can't put it in the back of the net. A, high, a pretty interesting first opening minute. 11 minutes in now and there is another highlight. Esposito tries to switch the ball but Rashford is tracking back well for Spurs and he's managed to intercept the pass there and Luke Shaw can bring it out. We do regain possession in the defensive area and Renato Sanchez can drive forward and show some purpose going in. He's in at the box, he's beat his man, he's beat two men, played about a Dodo, back to Pellegrini and Luca Pellegrini, our left wing back, gets his fifth goal of the season. That was all Do uh, Renato Sanchez, sorry, driving forward, really, really creating problems for the Tottenham Hotspur defence. You can see, is that Rashford coming back? No, it's Wijnaldum and he absolutely does him there. And he plays a back lovely to Dodo, but a block in. Danny Olmo to Pellegrini makes it 1-0. But Spurs are back on the attack straight away. It's played in a low sell saw, And that is a comfortable, comfortable finish by them. Not a chance for Jordan Pickford to be able to save that. It's all, I can feel Spurs are actually playing quite well. And I don't really understand how they are in the position they are, but they've definitely maybe turned things around right now as Los Alto buries that quite easily. 30 minutes in now, Spurs once again on the attack with Molina on the right-hand side, but the ball deflects its way to Iliax Mariba, who can drive down this left-hand side. We've got three people driving in the box if he can find them. He goes back to Pellegrini and gives the ball away, and Los Alto can play the ball over the top for Guri. They haven't really got men coming in, and thankfully it was a poor shot. Tilo Kera with a throw in an advanced area. Dodo is the man linking up with him. Back to Sanchez. It's cleared by Spurs. Who's getting there first? It's going to be Bella Kochap who finds Dodo once again down this right-hand side. While no, he's got the talent to get the ball in the box. He finds Pellegrini again. And that is a strange header. I have no idea how that has ended up in the back of the net. It looked incredibly soft. But the keeper doesn't really react to the actual header itself. We'll see it again here. Dodo beat, beating his man just about and then whips the ball in. It's not a great cross and the header it just sort of dinked and the keeper doesn't even die for it. I will take it all day though. Pellegrini, sixth goal of the season. Happy, happy days. Well, that lasted long. Um, literally, I've literally just stopped talking after our goal and they've scored again. Justin Molina with the goal this time and Lo with a free kick to the back post and it's as simple as you like. Four of our men all around the ball, none of which challenging the man or marking the man. And a defensive mistake probably cost us there. And there we have it, half time, a pretty even game, all things going, but a couple of um, sloppy errors by us really causing our downfall. But a 2 2, I'm not too disappointed, but I really, really would like to see us come out of here with a victory. Even though I said I'd be happy with a point, I'm never happy. It's took a good 20 minutes of the second half to get our first highlight and it's currently us in possession. Sanchez switching the ball lovely to Dodo. He's got loads of space. He goes for goal. Good save by Emil Odero. You would think it would have probably been better for him to get to the byline and whip that back post. There's Daniel Mo whips in the corner. It's cleared by Spurs and that's the end of that. We do have a good couple of players who are struggling for conditioning but one of them is Pellegrini who's currently on a hat-trick so I don't really want to take him off. Um... Renato Sanchez Mariva linking up really, really well on that left hand side. It's out of Dodo. Oh, if that falls to anybody else, I think that's in the back of the net. And even though Dodo does score goals, that was like a. I'm going to have to take off Pellegrini now. He's absolutely struggling. We'll get Josh Tightman on. But if that fell to anyone but Dodo, we'll probably be 3 2 up. Another highlight, another throw in advanced position in that right hand side. Renato Sanchez driving forward once again. Back to Kera, back to Dodo. It's whipped in. It's out to Josh Tymon who goes for another weird header. And the ball physics are were very strange. Esposito's not having the greatest game out there. We're going to take him off for Wayne Knowles. See if he can pull any magic out of Wayne Knowles' hat. We never know. He might be able to do it. But with only a few minutes remaining in the match, it looks like it's going to just peter out. And I'm not going for this. I'm quite happy with the 2-2 draw, despite Spurs' uh, predicament at the minute in the league. And looking at the match stats, we did have the better of the game. But... Going away from home against Spurs and getting a 2-2 draw is not the end of the world. Because of that draw, we have ended up dropping to third position. One point behind Manchester City and Arsenal. But I'm not too concerned about that. It was a decent enough result against a good Spurs side. Looking forward to the next episode. There's going to be a ton of games in between, but we'll uh, not a ton. Four. Uh, Shakhtar and Barcelona are going to be the two games to round out our Champions League group stage campaign. 
I wouldn't have minded fitting Manchester City in there, but I'm not interested in doing three games in one episode. But we've got some interesting ties in between, particularly against Liverpool and Arsenal at home. So, and obviously Rosenborg as well at home in the Champions League, which again, we are currently in second five points behind uh, Barcelona and looking confident in qualifying at second place. In terms of the club vision, everything is going as it should. Currently, we are expected to qualify for the first knock in the Champions League, qualify for the Europa League in the league and reach the quarterfinals of the League Cup, all of which we are currently doing. And the club culture is going well as well. So everything is hunky-dory for now. But anyway, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.